What a time to be alive. Motion VFX has just dropped a groundbreaking pack of tools and effects for us Final Cut Pro users. And I'm going to tell you, these are game changing. It's called Cine Studio. And what they've done is they've bundled some of their much loved existing effects with some amazing new tools here in Final Cut Pro. These tools include an upgrade to the 3D tracker that they've already had. They've also added a rotoscoping feature and a surface tracker. And what the magic of this pack is isn't just like in one of these tools it's when you start stacking them one on top of another you get these eye-popping super realistic effects in this video i'm really just going to focus on what the new tools are and i'll put some time codes down below so you can jump to the tool you're most excited about learning more about but really i recommend you just like play this video from this point forward so you can see how the stacking works and i want to let you know that this video isn't sponsored but motion vfx did give me free early access to these tools so I could look at them and tell you guys what I think. And you know, I'm always honest, but I can tell you right away, they are chef's kiss amazing with a few very nitpicky suggestions that I'm going to get to at the end. If you guys want to try out Cine Studio, I think they're doing a free trial. I'm going to link to it down below so you can check it out for yourself, but I'm so excited to show you how it works. Let's get into it. So here's the first clip we're going to be working with. Like I said, I'm going to start stacking effects onto this clip to make it really eye popping in the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with the film looks from Motion VFX. Again, this isn't new, but if you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth taking a peek at. What sticks out to me about this particular tool is these on screen controls. Now, let me just expand my inspector so you can see all of the different settings. It is a lot of scrolling to fine tune this effect, which is why I love these on screen controls because you can really just jump back and forth between the most basic settings. The first thing I'm going to do is just change my color space here. And I'm just going to use these on screen controls to fine tune my look. What's interesting also about these film looks is that you can go ahead and apply a LUT as well. So I'm going to select the LUT here in the on screen control, and then I'm going to hit these four squares, which is going to open up this pop up window so I can browse different LUTs and see how they're affecting my clip. I'm going to stay on index. And you can enable or disable different effects through this on screen control. So I want to disable the aberration and the lens distortion, but I do want to enable some film grain. For the letterbox, I could use this on screen control here, but I'm actually going to scroll down to my letterbox tools and I'm going to manually set my letterbox here. And the last thing I'm going to do is cue up my playhead to where his head is highest in the frame right here. It's getting cut off and I'm just going to play with the offset. All right, so that's like step one, the way I would do it. Now let's look at another pack of effects from Cine Studio. This one is going to be M Flare 2. And I'm just going to drop on here, this one here called Defocused Afterglow. And it adds a little bit of depth to this shot. I'm gonna hit edit and get this pop-up window. And here is where I can fine tune a little bit. So I do think this like guitar pick shaped iris is a little too big because it's kind of over his face. So I'm just going to resize and reposition it. And then maybe this glow could come down a little bit. Now you can see that my flare is lying outside of the letterbox. That's okay, we're gonna fix that later. Now, obviously we could stop here and the shot looks great, but why would we do that when we have all these great new tools for motion VFX? Let's first start with Roto AI. So I'm just going to drop Roto AI onto my clip. And before I do anything, I want to disable the defocused afterglow. We'll come back to that later. And on the Roto AI effect, I want to change my precision from fast to accurate. You cannot go back and make this switch once you start cutting out your object. So you want to make that decision at this point. I personally would always recommend going the most accurate as possible personally, but that's just me. Maybe you're more interested in going fast. So now let's take a look at these on screen controls. This magic wand is your selection tool. You can drop down and switch to a paintbrush tool, which is a manual tool, but the magic wand works awesome. This next one here is your erasing tool if you need to deselect an area. So let's start with that selection tool, the magic wand, and watch this. I mean, I am just scribbling over our subject here. I'm holding down my mouse button as I do this. I'm just twirling around. All right, now I'm gonna release my mouse button and boom. 
we've selected our subject perfectly. So now we hit the tracker button and I'm going to track forward. And I'm also gonna track backward. I've noticed that sometimes with this track for just like a couple frames, it might miss a selected area like you can see right here with the face of this guitar. So what you can do is cue up your playhead to that part and then just use the magic wand tool to color in that one or two frames. Or if it's a lot of frames, cue up your playhead to where you see this drift, make your selection with the magic wand tool and then retrack either backward or forward, whichever way you need to go. This particular shot's kind of challenging, right? Cause it's like a dark shirt over a dark background. So the tracker can get a little bit lost, but honestly, I think it does a really great job. And also depending on how you're compositing your image, you may or may not to be as picky as I'm being. So now that we've rotoscoped this clip, what I wanna do is duplicate it so I can put an element in between our subject and the rest of the shot. So I'm gonna select this top clip that we've duplicated. In the inspector window, we are going to go to masked video and let me disable the bottom clip. And you can see that now we've isolated our subject. Now you may be wondering what's the difference between this and let's say the scene background remover built into Final Cut Pro or Keeper, which is an awesome plugin that I've talked so much about on this channel. The difference between Roto AI and Keeper or the scene background remover is that those other tools automatically select the subject in your shots, but you cannot manually select the subject. So if Keeper doesn't identify what you're trying to isolate, you're kind of like out of luck with it, as opposed to M Roto AI, which gives you so much more precision. I will still continue to use Keeper because in a lot of situations, you can see it's much faster. It's a drag and drop tool that cuts things off a of background. Whereas with M Roto AI, I think the results are better, but obviously it's more work. So you kind of just have to figure out which situation is best for you to use the motion VFX tool and when it's more appropriate to use the scene background remover or keeper. Let's enable the background shot and I'm going to disable the top shot. All right, now let's apply our next tool from Motion VFX, which is M Tracker 3D. I'm just going to drag it and drop it onto my clip. M Tracker 3D is something I have talked about before on my channel. It is a 3D tracker. It tracks objects in 3D space as opposed to the object tracker in Final Cut Pro. If you want more of an explanation of how these two things are different, I have talked about it in a prior video that I will put a card to right here at the top of the screen if you're interested in that. But just trust me, it's different. What's new with M Tracker 3D is that the original M Tracker 3D included like all of these elements that were trackable in 3D space. But now with Cine Studio, they've rolled out what are called expansion packs. It's more categories of elements that you can add to your videos. So let me select our bottom clip again in our timeline. And the first step to using MTracker 3D is just to track the footage. So all I have to do is hit the track button and wait. And now what I want to do, because the subject in this shot is moving around a lot, I don't want the tracker to think I'm trying to track him. I'm actually trying to track the background. So what I'm going to do is hit this button here in the inspector window, and it gives me what they call the gizmo. This thing is kind of crazy. I find it a little bit hard to use, but what I'm just going to do is click on things that are fixed in the background that are going to be easy for the tracker to recognize. So I'm going to select, it looks like the edge of a keyboard here, and then I'm going to hit the command key. I can pick more than one spot. I'm going to pick this mic stand. So now the tracker is attached to the background as opposed to the subject. Now I'm going to select my element that I want to work with in the expansion pack in the titles and generators sidebar from Motion VFX, I'm gonna go down to the glow pack and choose this line wall and I'm gonna drop it between my two clips and I'm going to trim the end. Now, before I attach this title to the tracking we did in our bottom clip here, what I'm gonna do is just make some adjustments in the title inspector to get these lines the way I want them to look. So now that I've got my elements where I want them, it's time to link together the track for my original clip and these effects. So what I'm going to do is head down to my original clip. I'm going to copy the track. Then I'm going to head up to the line wall and paste the track. And now that line wall is moving with the shot. Now what I want to do is enable my top clip. And now he's really standing out over that background. Again, we're getting some overlap on the letterbox. Like I said, I'm not going to worry about that yet. Now let me add one more element, these sparks, just for fun. Why not? Let's be extra. So again, I'm just going to sandwich it between my two video clips. 
I'm going to trim the end. I'm going to make some adjustments to these sparks. And then I'm going to head up to the top and paste my track. And now I'm going to finish up this composition with an adjustment layer. I'm going to apply the letterbox effect to this and crop it so everything looks nice and tidy. And then remember our flare effect that we disabled before? I'm going to copy it from our original clip and just that effect I'm going to apply to our adjustment layer so it's on top of everything. And I'm just gonna reorder it in my inspector so it is also being cropped with, with the letterbox. And let's take a look at a before and after of what this shot used to look like and what it looks like now. So you can see how all of these elements work together to really achieve something great. Now let's move on to what you're probably really excited about, the surface tracker. So here's our original shot. It's just this woman smiling and I'm going to put a scary mouth over her actual mouth because it's Halloween time and I love Halloween and I'm excited about it. And it's a great example of how the surface tracker works. So all we need to do is head on over to the M tracker surface. I'm just gonna drag and drop. And we get these on-screen controls here. We've got our little Bezier selection enabled by default. So all I'm going to do is just start clicking and drawing around her mouth. And we just wanna close up the points. You can reposition your points even after you've clicked on them. And then these other little handles are actually a way to feather things out if you needed to do that. So once we've got her mouth surrounded, I'm gonna hit the tracker button and we're just gonna track forward and track backward. Okay, now what we need to do is add our source image to the drop zone. So I'm gonna select the source image button and select this scary mouth in my browser. Let's hit apply clip. So let me just scrub here. Yeah, it does seem to be moving with her mouth. It doesn't look great though. It's really easy to just kind of fine tune the way this looks. On the pan and scale option, let's just hit show. And I can see like the top corners are getting a little clipped here. I'm gonna go back to my Bezier tool. And yeah, that looks really realistic. To finish it off, I'm gonna go back to the film looks. Let's go Boulevard. And yeah, that's the surface tracker in action. I did say at the beginning of this video that I had a few things that I thought maybe could be improved upon. Uh, the first one is I wish that you could change the scale of the brush on the rotoscope tool to make it bigger or smaller when you're making your selection. That's one thing I would love to see. Another thing I'd love to see, and only because I use particles so much in motion, is that I know that some of the parameters that you can adjust in Apple Motion are missing from the particles that come with the expansion packs. So for instance, if we go back to the sparks that we used before, if you increase the gravity on these sparks, it actually makes them float upward instead of downward. It's backwards from how it is in motion. And I thought that's fine because I, I really wanted these sparks to come downward. I thought, oh, I'll just make it a negative value. And you really can't like it's stuck at zero. Just little things like that. I wish I had more control over some of these elements in the 3D tracker packs. Another thing that sticks out to me is the challenge we had with letterboxing. You saw with the film looks, they included letterboxing, but none of the other tools like these expansion pack items or the flares had the letterbox settings that those film looks did. And I do think that should be a really easy add-on because if you're selling all this together in one pack, I really wanna be able to control the letterboxing with the most precision possible in the rest of the elements that I'm adding to my effects. And the other thing that I would love to see, which I don't think is going to be an easy add-on, is that in these film looks with all of these really great on-screen control tools, what I would love to see is sort of if I click on, let's say the levels shortcut here, I would love for somehow my inspector to jump to this section so it works more as a shortcut. 
I think that's kind of a discussion that Motion VFX would need to have with Apple. I don't even know if that's possible, but I will say as these third-party developers come up with more and more intricate effects, the inspector window does start to feel a little bit insufficient. So I would love to see a workflow where you could shortcut with on-screen controls and jump to different parts in your inspector. I think that would be really helpful as these tools get more and more advanced. But as you can tell, I'm very excited about Cine Studio. I think it is just a fantastic collection of tools and effects. And I didn't even like hit on all of the effects that come with Cine Studio. I hit on the main tools like the 3D tracker, surface tracker, and rotoscoping. But if you want to see more ways in which I would utilize these tools, I would be happy to make another video about it because I really love it. Let me know down in the comments. Thanks to everyone who watches to the very end. I picked out some other videos for you. I'll see you guys again.